going to be ministering this morning. We're still somewhat in the vein of love, faith, and obedience, or faith, love, and obedience. Um, Brother Greg, Deacon, Deacon Mays messed me up just a little bit, but he uh, went into the archives and he found Pastor Davenport, one of Pastor Davenport's messages on the faith, love, and obedience principle. Amen. And um, I listened to that last week, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing all right with, with the where, where I've been in that series, but I said, man, oh, man, oh, man, can't nobody drop it like Howard Davenport. <laughs> Praise God. So thank God we have so much of his, um, of his messages and whatever available to us that we can still, um, he being dead yet speaks, amen? So thank God for that, praise God. So anyway, I'm not deviating from the, the, the series for this purpose, but I actually received something that is for um, Brother Alfred and Brother Brian preached your Mother's Day sermon. So I don't have a Mother's Day sermon for you this morning, but I do have what I believe is the word of the Lord for this house on this day, and it's for women, it's for um, girls, it's for mothers, it's for men, it's for boys, it's for the body of Christ, amen? So if you look in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, amen, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, and um, I quoted this or read this, I believe, as a part of the um, part of the series that it was on um, la the last couple weeks, and especially last week. But starting in verse one, he says, "I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me." That's significant. He's watching to see what he was going to say. Now, we would normally think of that, that he was listening to hear what he was going to say. But he says he was watching. He was paying attention. He was, he was observant. He was being aware to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Glory to God. And make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it the vision will speak. A vision is something that you see, but this is a speaking vision. This is a, vi a vision that you will see, and this vision will say something to you. Are you with me? But at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk here is pointing out something to us concerning vision. And the, the message which, which will conclude in, a, in another place of scripture, but the title for this for those of you that are listening and watching and excuse me for we had so many things going on but those of you that are joining us uh, on the YouTube um, telecast we welcome you to Lansing Christian Center Church I'm Minister Andrew Ellison we are located located here at let me get my stuff here 5640 South Waverly Road Lansing Michigan 48911 and our mailing address is P.O. Box 27413 Lansing, Michigan, 48909. We have a prayer team that meets the first and third Friday of each month at noon. If you are in need of someone to pray for you, 
please call 517-646-8077 at noon Eastern Standard Time during the hour of prayer. There will be someone to take your prayer request and pass it on to the prayer team who will pray for you according to James 5 and 16. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You can find more information about this ministry at Lansing Christian Center Church, all one word, dot O-R-G. Lansing Christian Center Church, dot O-R-G. Amen? So in this passage of scripture again that we are again in Habakkuk, he says to write the vision. He's given us something to see, and this vision that we're going to see is going to inspire something in us. It's going to give us, actually, this is what hope actually is. Hope is an inner vision. Hope is an inner awareness of what God has said. It is actually picturing what hope is picturing what God says about you. God, by his grace and by his power, by his anointing, gives us the ability as believers to take the word of God and to allow it to create an image on the inside of us that can be communicated even to our brains. That's why you have an imagination. It is, a, it is to allow you to think and to to. to to believe and to dream, if you will, with a picture in front of you or a picture within you about who you are and what you have in Christ Jesus. You will speed yourself or move yourself closer, faster to what it is that you desire when you can see yourself with it. Huh? Start, listen to me, you need to talk about yourself as healed, but you need to see yourself healed. Have an image, have an image, have a hope on the inside of you of what you desire the Lord to do or what he's already done in your physical being. Amen? You need to get a picture in front of you. You, get to, you need to get something to hold on to, for something to latch on to and see yourself, if you've been sick, see yourself well. Amen? If, you, if, you, if you've been sad, see yourself happy. If you've been lonely, see yourself with other people. Come on, somebody. Come on, see yourself. Imagine yourself. If you haven't been able to get around very good and you haven't been able to walk, see yourself walking with your knees coming up nice and high. Glory to God. Start to see yourself running if you need to. Amen. If you haven't been able to keep anything on your stomach, see yourself eating some of your favorite good foods. Come on, somebody. Get an image. Get a picture of what it is that you desire, of what it is that you're headed for. Hope is, is an inner image. It's a vision, and it's a happy or a confident expectation of good. I'm talking about Bible hope now. Bible hope is an anticipation, a confident expectation of good. It's seeing what is coming in your actual manifested physical being. Amen. It's all right to think about yourself that way if you see that that's what God has said about you and as you embrace that and take that for yourself. Don't get mad about me, but mad at me, but we talk about our issues and our problems too much. That's what we have in our mouths and that's what we've got on our minds and so that's how we see ourselves. Boy, it's quiet in here this morning. If you see yourself broke, you always going to be broke. If you don't ever see yourself as having any money, you ain't never going to have no money. Come on, somebody. If that's all you can see, that's all you're going to say, that's all you're going to talk about, and you will have what you say. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Glory to God. Glory to God. These things are all tied in and connected and work together. Amen. I'm not, I'm not changing, as it were, 
the message of the series that I'm preaching or teaching, and it's along the lines of the things that Pastor um, uh, has taught for, taught for many years and, and talked about many times, but I'm going to be um, at changing. He says the love, faith, and obedience principle. I'm going to be calling it the faith, love, and obedience connection. Amen? The love, faith, and obedience connection. But this morning, though, my topic, and if I didn't say that already, my topic this morning is growth and abundance. Come on, say that. Say growth and abundance. See, if we're not careful, if the only image or the only imagination that we have of ourselves is winding down, wearing out, got to get some rest, and you should rest your bodies, you should take care of them. But if that's the only picture that we have of ourselves, we're not going to grow and we're not going to be prosperous and abundant. And when I say prosperous, I'm not just talking about money, but money, but abundance in all the things of God. If I'm going to be abundant, I want to be abundant in love. Huh? If I'm going to be abundant, I want to be abundant in joy. If I'm going to be abundant, I want to be abundant in peace. Glory to God. Anybody want a whole lot of peace? I know I do. Glory to God. Growth and abundance, not just in material things, but in the things of God that God has placed within me and given to me. I want to grow in those things, and I want to be abundant, overflowing in those things. Amen. It's good, it's good to be aware of one another, when one another, each, when someone is absent, that's good. But don't count, don't, don't count empty seats every Sunday. Huh? If we want to see growth, if we want to see abundance, see the seats full. Get an inner image on the inside of yourself of a full instrument, of a full, a full house. Amen. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The proud is the person whose soul is up, is, is the person who says, I got this. Hmm? I got this. I got this. But the just is going to say, I can't do this without him. But with him, I can do all things. Glory to God. It's, all, it's not bad to say, uh, to say one or the other, but it's good to say them both. I can't do anything without him, but with him, I can do all things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of us, some of us have thought and said, well, without him, I can't do nothing. And so we just folded up our hands and sat down and said, well, I can't do nothing without him. And since he's not doing nothing, watch out now. Come on. Go to Romans chapter 15. You can write this in your notes as the point. Point number one, growth and abundance begin with a vision. This, this message, this word from the Lord, I, I didn't write the exact time down here in my notes. No, I didn't. Down here in my notes. But um, I, my normal... Uh, time with the Lord is somewhere around five o'clock in the morning when I get up and I spend time with the Lord in the in the morning usually somewhere between five and seven in the morning and this is, was what he spoke to me at five in the morning this past Thursday growth and abundance begin with vision and I'm t I said that this word is for this house I began to think about and I began to meditate on the vision for this house. The vision that came from our founder and our senior pastor, Howard Davenport. He gave us a vision. He got a vision. He got an assignment and a mission from God. And that vision is not over. Come on, somebody. 
I'm not being um, uh, 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 lack, lack of respect. I miss him. But the vision still lives. Hallelujah. We do want to pay honor and we do want to pay tribute to him. But if you want to honor him, honor the vision that he gave. He left us with something. He left us with a vision to accomplish and complete. And though our congregation may be of a more advanced years or more mature, that doesn't mean that our time is over and done. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope, the God of confident expectation, the God of happy anticipation of good, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. He's the God of hope, and he wants to fill you with joy and peace in your believing. We've been talking about it for several weeks and saying it again here. Faith is the substance of the thing hoped for. It's the, it's the substance. Faith is what gives substance to your hope. So you can't abandon or you can't set hope aside. Amen. Our first African-American president ran with a, a campaign slogan to keep hope alive. Amen. I don't know what he was talking about. Amen. And that proved itself or didn't prove itself in his administration. Bless the Lord. Thank God for the man. Amen. But the Bible Bible hope is believing God, and it is for God, the God of hope, the God of confident expectation, the God of vision. Come on now. Listen to me. Again, without any disrespect, the vision is always bigger than the person that receives it. Glory to God. May he fill you with all hope and joy and belief, with joy and peace and believing that you may abound. He wants to fit the God of hope wants to fill you with joy and peace. So your hope gets bigger. Come on now. Hope isn't supposed to shrink up and shrivel up and draw up and draw away and get small. Hope is supposed to abound. When the joy and the peace of the Lord comes from God filling you with his joy and peace, that's supposed to inspire you. It's supposed to make your vision expand. Your hope is supposed to get bigger. Come on, somebody. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1. Therefore, we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us do what? Come on. Boy, it's quiet in here. I can hear the, 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 the crickets walking across these soft pews. It's so quiet. Let us run. Let us run. Somebody already said, some, let us persevere. Let us apply some energy, some effort, some diligence with patience, with constant consistency. That's what that word patience really means. With constant consistency. The race is not a sprint. The race is not even just a marathon. The race is really a marathon relay race. Come on. This race that we're in is a marathon relay race because we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. We're surrounded by the ones who have carried the baton before us and they pass the baton on to us for us to keep on running the race. Amen. 
I, to I told you at Pastor's home going, I said from the time that he, um, this, from, the time, from, the, from the time I heard that he moved to heaven, up, even up until the homecoming and even home going, excuse me, even up until to now, because of remembering and everyone, everybody in this room, if, if you say that you haven't been, then you're not telling the truth, has been having reminiscing, reminiscing about Howard Davenport. It's inevitable. Nothing wrong with that. It's not bad. It's not a bad thing. And I was remembering some times and some conversations that I had with him. And I remember him specifically telling me after a point of particular, a low point in my life, in my existence, he said to me, what you going to do now? You going to quit? Come on, Lansing Christian Center Church. He's asking us. The Spirit of God is asking us, what you going to do now? You going to quit? Huh? Or are you going to take up the baton and run with patience the race that is set before you? This ain't over. This ain't done. Sister Polly, the trustees are seeing to it that we're not closing the doors and shutting down. Come on. You need to tell that to the heavens. You need to tell that to the principalities and the powers. And you need to tell that to the greater church community of Lansing. We ain't gone. Come on now. We're not going to do disservice to our leader that way. These doors ain't shutting up. Amen. I'm not sitting down somewhere and, and folding my hands and, 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 and being in deep mourning that I can't function. Amen. Even as it is important to do those things, but still, I'm not going to let it shut me down. Amen. And our pastor moving to heaven, this ministry is not shutting down. Everybody, thank you, Sister Lillian. Thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. We've got a race to, 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 to complete. We've got an assignment to do. Amen. To accomplish. And how did he do it? We run with endurance, with persistence, with constancy. Now he said, he said in Habakkuk, he said that that he may run that reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak. At the end it will be manifest. And it will not lie. Though it tarries, though it takes a little while, though it didn't all show up at one time, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't turn back. Don't give up. Though it tarry, wait for it. Glory to God, because it will surely come. So he says in Hebrews again, running with patience, the race, the endurance, patience, I think it says in the King James, with endurance, the race that is set us before us, looking unto Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Looking unto Jesus. When it seems like the whole world around me is topsy-turvy. When it seems like, well, I don't know what's going to happen next. When it seems like I can't take no more, I look to Jesus. Glory to God. I look to who he is. I look to what he's done. I look to who he's made me. I look to what he's, uh, what, he's, what he's called me to be and created me to do. I look to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I read this somewhere, and I just kind of liked it. It has a, a, a ring of truth to it. Take it for what it's worth. But the world <laughs> is to have an example, but God doesn't tell the world 
to follow Christians, he tells the world to follow Christ. Think about that. Think about that. Christians, the best of them, is going to mess up. But Christ. <laughs> my never changing, my never failing, my sinless, faultless, God man, hallelujah. I can follow him when I can't see you. I can follow him. When I don't know what you're about, I know what he's about. Glory to God. Or I can discover what he's about. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, this is where I'm going to close in these last few minutes that I have here. Go to Psalm number 65. Psalm number, number 65. This is the vision. This is the hope that God deposited in me in just a few moments, in just a few moments on Thursday morning around five something in the morning this past Thursday, Psalm number 65. It's not a very long psalm, so I'm going to read as much of it as I can, but I want to concentrate on a particular portion of the psalm. Psalm number 65 I'm reading from the New King James. Yes, I am, the New King James. Most of you have the King James, so I'm going to go ahead and read it from the King James. Amen. Now, when we get going here real good, all these scripture verses and whatever, don't, don't throw your Bibles away, but we're going to have them right up, up, up here. So if you forgot your Bible or if your phone ain't working, then you can, oh, there's the scriptures right there, amen, and then you can write them down. Praise waits for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee. Because he, 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 cho he chose us and and allowed us or caused us to approach him in his righteousness because he dealt with our sin. Amen. He dealt with our sin and because he dealt with our sin, he dealt with our sin and gave us his righteousness. And so we're chosen to approach him. That licks in the, this, the last part of this verse that he or this person who has been chosen to approach him shall may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Just another way of saying that the presence of the Lord is what I want. He caused us to approach him or to draw near to him or chose us so that we could be with him. So we could fellowship with him. So we could inter interact with him. So we could intercourse with him. So we could have relationship with him. He chose us for that purpose. He chose you because he wants you to be with him. He wants, listen to me, listen to me. Thank God that we come to service and we should come to service for we're not, we're to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Coming to church, coming this morning, last morning or last Sunday, whatever. It's a good thing. You did a good thing. But more than you coming to church, the most important thing is that you spend time with God. That you spend time in his word. Amen. Amen. What, you know what I've discovered without, without um, laying any uh, um, sp special extra or, or claiming any special burdens or anything uh, on, on me necessarily, but with new responsibility or with new assignment comes new responsibility. Amen. 
So, oh, pray, and I, I appreciate the, the commendations and the thing. Oh, praise God for your, for your appointment. Praise God for your promotion, bro, Brother Andrew, and praise God. And amen, I, I'm thankful for it too. But you know what it means? It means more prayer. It means more time in the word. Amen. It means less time doing stuff that I think I just want to do because I want to do them. Amen. But praise God, with the assignment comes the grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He doesn't call me or call you to do anything that he doesn't give you the grace to accomplish it. Verse 5, by terrible things in righteousness wilt thou answer us, O God, of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off upon the seas, which by his strength setteth fast the mountains, being girded with power, which stilleth the noise of the seas. If you really look at this and study this, he's really taught, and he says it here in the, in the last part of this verse, of this seventh verse, he's talking about people. The turmoil that's in people, the noise of the seas, the tumult of the, you could just say the tumult of the people, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the people. He says it there. But the, the, the disturbance, the murmuring, the confusion of the people, he stills that. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts of the, are afraid of, at thy tokens. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and the evening to rejoice. Both morning and evening is time for rejoicing. Oh, God, I got to go to work today. Oh, God, I get to go to work today. Come on, somebody. Oh, Lord, it's Sunday. Oh, Lord, it's Sunday. I better get ready for church. Come on, somebody. Run with patience the race that is set before you. Sunday morning, jump up out of that bed, hallelujah, praising God. I get to be with the people of God today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I get to see some smiling faces. I get to, there's nothing probably that pleases us more as individuals. We like to be around people that are like us. That's just, hum, that's just human people. That's humanity. So here's a whole, whole room full, a whole body of people that are like me. I've been messing with fools all week. <laughs> Heaven all week. Crazy people all week. And now I get to be around some praise the Lord people. Some bless the Lord on oh my soul people. Some singing people. Some shouting people. Some dancing people. Some hollering people. Some hand waving people. Glory to God. I'm in my element. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody going to make me feel bad about coming to church or meeting with the body. You ain't going to make me feel bad about that. Even, and you've heard me say it many times before, even when people, I've never felt bad about it, but when people get all incredulous, you go all the way to Lansing, to church, I so do. <laughs> Come on. If you start acting like my folk down there, I'll stay here with you. But you don't act like my folk. I'm going to be with my people. Come on, somebody. I need to be with my people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm winding down. I got just a few minutes. Thou visitest the earth, thou waterest it, thou greatly enriches it with the river of God, which is full of water. 
Jot in your notes. The river of God that's full of water. You also find reference to the, the, there, there, is a, there is a river that makes glad the city of God. That's in Psalm 46. Amen. Psalm 40. There's a river that makes glad the city of God. Both the river and the city are talking about us. In John 7, 38, round in there, 38, 39, 37, 38, 39, he that believes as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers. Amen. You're not the source of the river, but, you are, but the rivers flow out of and flow through you, and that river makes glad the city of God. What comes out of you makes the people of God glad. It makes pe- it's supposed to make people around you glad. Pastor said this a few days, a, a few weeks or whatever. One time he was ministering, and I, I talked to him about it after he said it, but he said something that I'd never heard said quite that way, way before, and he was talking about praying in the Spirit and praying in the Holy Ghost. And he said when you pray in tongues, even when you are um, apart from or when you're with the body, you contri- and he used this word, you contribute to the body. You have a supply. You've got a supply that that person sitting six feet away from you on that pew needs. You've got something to give, to impart into them. Amen. By your word, by your smile. And even when you don't even know necessarily that you're um, reaching out to this person or that person, when you move in the things of the spirit, you're contributing to the body. You're building the body even though you may not know who you're building at that time or what you're accomplishing at that time, but you're edifying the body. Glory to God. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. I think I've switched over to the New King James. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its what? Growth. Let me go back to the King James so I don't mess you up too bad. Thou thou visitest the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly enriches it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast so provided for it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof, the growth. Growth is blessed of God. Godly growth is blessed of God. God is about growth. God is about produce. The fruit of the Spirit is the produce of the Spirit. It's the outgrowth of the Spirit of, of, the spirit of God on the human spirit. It's the produce of the Spirit. The love, the joy, the peace, the gentleness, the goodness, the meekness, the temperance, the faith. Those things are the outgrowth of the manifestation of the Spirit of God on the human spirit. Now, now this is the verse I want you to get. Verse 11. This is the vision that was deposited Thursday morning, five something in the morning. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. Let that sink in for a minute. Thou crownest. When God crowns something, he's putting his approval on it. We feel like you can feel like in some some times or some situations you you might have a rocky point here or there or a a rough start. But he crowned his his goal, his, his intention, his design is to crown the year with his goodness. In 2022, I'm going to be wearing, I am wearing a crown of the goodness of God. Come on, somebody. No matter what I go through, no matter what I face, no matter what I come up against, I'm crowned with goodness. Glory to God. It's not just some little thing sitting on my head, but when God talks about crowning you, he's talking about encircling you. 
He surrounds you with it. He crowns you. He, that crown just comes off your head and comes all over your being. He crowns your year. He's encircling your year with goodness. Lansing Christian Center Church, this year is crowned with the goodness of God. Come on, go tell somebody, this year is crowned. Go tell them, come on. Tell one of the church members, tell them, this year is crowned with God's goodness. He crowns the year with goodness. And then the second part of it, thy paths drop fatness. The new King James is abundance. There's my title, growth and abundance. He crowns the year with his goodness, and out of his goodness comes an abundance, an overflow. Now, this is a Hebrew word picture. Hebrew is a picture language. And the Hebrew word picture, get this image in your mind of a wagon. Some of you that were, grew up on farms or, or in farm or farming areas or agricultural areas, a farm, a, a farm wagon that's loaded down with all of this produce that's come in from the harvest. And the wagon's going down through the field, through the rickety where the furrows are and where the, where the ground's a little bit rough. And the wagon is shaking, it's jiggling. But look, the, his, his paths drop fatness every time the wagon shakes. <laughs> Woo! Every time the wagon moves a little bit, some of that goodness falls off. Glory to God, glory to God. The devil might hit me with a shot here and there. He might bump me every now and then, but the paths drop fatness. When you bump me, the goodness of God is coming off of me. The blessing of God is coming off of me. If you try to shake me and try to move me, the blessing of God is all you're going to get. All you're going to get is the goodness of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell somebody his paths drop fatness. The road I'm going down might be a little bit rough. But when I get shaken on that little rough road, all that's going to happen is just going to drop some fatness. <laughs> it's going to drop some goodness. It's going to drop some abundance. Because my wagon's overloaded. He anoints my head with oil, my cup. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, verse 12, and the little hills rejoice on every side. This vision, this is God creating this vision, giving us this imagination. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The pastures are clothed with flocks. Let me put it to you in 2022, the building is full of people. The church is bursting at the seams. The congregation is alive and vibrant. The young people are running down the aisles, falling on their face and saying, what must I do to be saved? People are getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. People are getting healed and getting raised up. Lives are being restored. Because the little hills rejoice on every side. Glory to God. The, the, the pastures are clothed, are covered Covered. They're covered. The pastures are clothed. Glory to God. Clothed with all the things of God. The valleys also are covered over with corn. They shout for joy. And they also sing. Glory to God. That's our hope, folks. That's our vision. 
Amen. I, we didn't get it up, but it's going to be up here next chance I get. I, told, I, 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 I got this, and sometime on Thursday, it might have been Friday morning, I told Tori, I said, honey, I need a banner. She said, what you need? She, so, she, I told her what it needed. It's out in the car. We didn't have time to get it up this morning. You'll see it when I get it up. It says growth and abundance. I want that in front of our faces. I want that in our thinking. Amen. I want that noise abroad in the city of Lansing. What's ha- what y'all doing over there? Growth and abundance. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's it. I went way over. Amen. You are probably over in your dinner reservation if you got one. Woo. You wives that's near your husbands, nudge him in the, and they say, you still taking me to dinner, boy. <laughs> Did you get anything out of this this morning?